Good evening, TNCC. You are gathered in your community groups now to continue in our journey through the Gospel of Mark. And today, we are looking at Mark chapter 9. In Mark chapter 9, Jesus told His disciples that some of them will see the Kingdom of God in power. That six days later, Jesus took Peter, James and John up a mountain where Jesus was transfigured before them. And when Jesus was transfigured, there was Moses and Elijah representing the law and the prophets. The sum of all the Old Covenant revelation, they met with Jesus at His transfiguration. Now, transfiguration isn't about a bright light shining on Jesus, but rather light radiating from within Jesus, that even His clothes began to shine. And for this brief period, Jesus took the appearance of the King of Glory, and the three disciples had a glimpse of the Kingdom of God in power. Peter, our fear, foolishly suggested that they were to build three booths, one for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But then the Father from heaven out in a loud voice. He said, This is my Son, whom I love. Listen to Him. Jesus is preeminent. Listen only to Him. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus instructed them not to tell anyone of what they witnessed until He had risen from the dead. Now that puzzled the disciples even more, and they discussed among themselves what that might mean. Then they decided to ask Jesus about Elijah coming before the Messiah as taught by the scribes. Jesus' answer was a little bit cryptic, but today looking back, we can understand. He said, yes, Elijah will come. Well, he will come before the second coming of Jesus as one of the two disciples, as some people, may, uh, some people teach. Okay? And yes, he had already come as John the Baptist preparing the way, as a forerunner preparing the way for Jesus. So they came down the mountain and then they were met by a man who had a dumb son possessed by an evil spirit. The disciples could not help the boy and he appealed to Jesus. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us, the man said to Jesus. Jesus replied, if you can, everything is possible for one who believes. The boy's father replied is instructive. I do believe, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Uh, Memorize it the other way. I believe. Help my unbelief. Okay? But he did believe that Jesus could deliver his boy. After all, why else would he have come to Jesus? But he also realized he had some doubts. Hence his cry to Jesus to help his unbelief. At this, Jesus commanded the spirit, at Jesus commanded, and the spirit left the boy. The onlookers thought the boy was dead, for he looked like a corpse, but Jesus lifted him to his feet. The disciples asked Jesus why they could not drive it out. His reply was simply that this kind could only come out by prayer. What was Jesus saying? After all, Jesus, we all pray all the time, isn't it? Jesus was saying that, that the disciples were unable to help the boy because they are not dependent on God completely. Jesus' exhortation to prayer then shows that we need to be ever dependent on Him for every spiritual victory. It happens sometimes, isn't it? We so, so, uh, so easily just use the name of Jesus and command this and command that, but without truly uh, depending on the Lord completely. So then Jesus again reminded His disciples about His impending death as He began to wind down His earthly ministry. However, they were pre too preoccupied about who among them was greatest. Jesus was very clear. Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. They were also distracted by others who drove out demons in Jesus' name. Jesus' instruction was simple. Do not stop him, for no one does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against me, against us, is for us. So Jesus summed up this discourse by telling them not to allow anything that they do with their hands and feet or see with their eyes to stumble or, or to stumble themselves or any of the little ones. 
Of course, I realized, you know, you read that you have to cut off your limbs here, cut your arm or cut your leg. But Jesus was just simply saying, uh, talking about it figuratively, okay? Then he goes on to say, we will be salted by the fire of the Holy Spirit to preserve and to preserve and refine us so that we will season the world and be with peace, be at peace with each other. Let's look at the questions. Today, for today's questions, let's focus on the quotes that we have quoted there. Okay, number one, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Share what you understand by this heavenly statement of the Father at the Transfiguration. What does it mean to listen to him? Number two, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. The father of the demon-possessed boy made an honest statement. Have you felt like this before? Can you share an experience with the rest of the group? Number three, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Is Jesus really stick with this statement? If yes, why? If no, why? We have one more question. Number four, salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourself and be at peace with each other. What do you understand by this statement of Jesus? How can this be applied to your life today? Share with your group. Have a great time discussing together. Be blessed. Amen.